From a fallout shelter in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. You give him a big Louisville slugger. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This is one of the days that I love being an Angelina. I totally love it. Call me crazy. But this is one of the days I love being an Angelino. Love it. As you know, I've been an Angelino for 20 years. And for those of you who don't live in Southern California, that's what we call someone from Los Angeles. An Angelino. That's what I am. We haven't had a day like this in a long time. People have forgotten what it's like to have a real rock and roll earthquake. And we had one today. And even though several hours have passed, all the sleepy news departments in town, in their midsummer doldrums, they've all been mobilized. Everybody has rolled into action. Now, uh, those of you who don't live in Southern California might enjoy knowing about this, or those of you who don't live in earthquake country. Obviously, there are places other than Southern California that have earthquakes, including Northern California. But for those of you who uh, do not live in um, an earthquake region, I know it's pretty much the same in most of them because I've had uh, earthquakes happen to be in other places, too. So for those of you who uh, those of you who don't live where earthquakes happen, let me set the scenario for you. Now, uh, just to be uh, clear, so you understand, in case you're hearing this for the first time, and I I need to take this seriously and uh, uh, be sensitive to that though we're not sensitive to very much. This morning at 11.42, a 5.4 magnitude quake uh, struck Southern California with an epicenter in Chino Hills. Chino Hills is about 30 miles south-southeast of L.A., for those of you who don't know. There are many people in Southern California who, come on, you've been faking it. You don't know where Chino or Chino Hills are. Come on. You know, there are so many cities, towns, localities, areas in Southern California. The vast majority of people here are faking it. When you ask people, I, I, I talk to people today. I swear these are natives. Uh, they said, uh, where is the epicenter? And I said, Chino Hills. And it's like, where is that? <laughs> I don't think that's near here. Where is that? <laughs> so the earthquake hits. And when the earthquake hits, first of all, it's not like a hurricane where, you know, they come on the news days in advance and give you an opportunity to evacuate. You're going about your business. And in this case, it was a Tuesday morning in Los Angeles. Most people are at work, many of them in buildings taller than one story. And so the thing hits. And various people are being uh, jolted. Many people don't remember a good, solid earthquake. I mean, in reality, 
the last one that was in this uh, ballpark was way worse than this one. That was the Northridge earthquake of 1994. That's the last really serious earthquake we had. We have been relatively lucky over these last 14 years after that punishing earthquake to pretty much be limited to uh, low magnitude tamblers and a variety of outlying locations. Uh, there was one brief jolt in the Hollywood Hills that I felt a couple of years ago at about midnight or 1 a.m. or something, and that was it. There hasn't been much else, and as a result, all these morons building all these tall apartment buildings, all these loft projects going on, L.A. is turning into this high-density city, which it never was. You know, for years, L.A. had apartment buildings that were two stories or apartment buildings that were spread out with a big pool in the middle, like what they call garden apartments. You get the big pool in the middle, and there's like two stories around the pool. Or then they had these... uh they had these houses called dingbats. Now, you maybe you've never heard the name dingbat, but you know what a dingbat is. A dingbat is one of these houses. It's one or two stories above, and then you park your car in a carport below the one or two stories. They're all over L.A. Did you know they're called dingbats? Look it up, Dean. I'm already on Dean's already on that. <laughs> dingbats, right. And put an interrobang at the end of that. Dingbats. Sounds like a good name for like a buddy action film. You know, Chris Tucker and Dingbats. But seriously, if you remember during the Northridge quake, the uh, top two stories came down and, 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 and made a car sandwich with your car parked below your house. There was a lot of that going on. Uh, there were a lot of places like around Northridge where the third floor became the first floor. Rather rapidly. So when the thing first hits, you don't know how bad it's going to be. And you don't know how close you are to the epicenter. I mean, this could be 250 miles away, and it could be a, an 8.6 roll, you know. Or you might be right over the fault line. You don't know. You don't know. So when it first hits... We are just a beehive of misinformation and people running around like their pants are on fire. Nobody knows what's going on. The funniest thing I ever saw, I was living in a corporate apartment. I was living in an Oakwood uh, when I uh, first came to town to work for Westwood One after I had left for 10 months to work in Boston. I was staying in an Oakwood apartment. And uh, nobody there except me had any experience living in L.A. Nobody there had been through an earthquake. They'd all come from other places. And most of the people there looked like they'd never been through an earthquake before. It was after the Northridge quake, and there were all these aftershocks happening. And I remember one night I, I'd gotten home from the radio show about 8 o'clock, and I'm uh, sitting in my living room, and there's a huge aftershock. And you can hear the bones of this apartment building creaking. I'm on the first floor. And I look out these sliding glass doors, and there's, as usual, it's one of these Oakwoods that's built around a pool. You look out those sliding glass doors, and there's people from, like, you know, Asia, people from Latin America. They are running around in circles. They don't even know what to do. They ran out the door, and they're running around in circles. And me, I've lived in L.A. i <laughs> been there, done that. Uh, come on, folks, get in the doorway. Let's go. So today, of course, uh, but by the way, where was I? I was in my car. I didn't feel the earthquake. I only got the the after effects of the earthquake. Okay. And what are the after effects of the earthquake? Well, the first thing you do is you turn on, if you live in Southern California, most people go to one of the all news stations to find out what happened. And the problem with going to the all-news station, first of all, most of those people who are working in the third floor of an office building on Wilshire Boulevard, they're all under their desks anyway. They're all scared to death. Let's start with that. And number two, here's the truth. You tune in to them. Think about this for a second, okay? You tune in to them for comfort. I mean, let's be honest. You're scared s 
restless, okay? You are scared to death. This could be the big one. So quickly you turn on the all news station and there is the anchor person who is never ready for this ever. And they're scared. And they were, here's the, let's just tell the truth, okay? I work in radio. The person on the radio you're tuning to for comfort, they're just a person like you and they don't know any more than you know. Think about it. You tune in for information. What do they know? They're sitting in an office building on Wilshire Boulevard. The epicenter is in Chino Hills. What do these people know? But you tell yourself that somehow the radio station knows more than you do. And by the way, I'm sure in Northern California it's the same deal. Yeah, you got that KCBS uh, in uh, San Francisco, and here you got KFWB and KNX. And people reach for the dial, they dive for the dial, and they tune in. And on the radio, it, it's always pretty much the same thing. Uh, of course, they don't want to compromise their journalistic integrity. That's after they've done commercials for a garage door company or whatever other companies they're doing endorsements for. They don't want to compromise their journalistic integrity. So they come on and they say something like, I believe... Uh, I just felt a jolt. I <clears throat> believe uh, feels like it could have been an earthquake, and uh, we are uh, checking right now with Caltech to see if, uh, uh, if there are any preliminary indications that there has been an earthquake. The reality is you could go to the Internet and do this yourself, okay? But Because that, that's what they're doing over there. <laughs> so what they frequently do, you have to understand, there's – at least a 15 to 20 minute delay between the time the earthquake hits and the time that Caltech officially announces what the magnitude was and the epicenter. That 20 minutes is some of the funniest radio you're ever going to hear. I mean, it's a scurry. Anytime I know there's an earthquake, I go right to one of the all-news stations. <laughs> because here's what you have. You have an anchor man who's just a person like you. But you think they're like the voice of doom or the voice of God or the voice of reason or the voice of information. You think they know everything. You feel comforted knowing you're going to them. They know no more than you do, but they have to sound like they know. Like the Wizard of Oz. You, ever, you just showed the Wizard of Oz on TNT the other night. Did you see the Wizard of Oz? Was it TNT? They showed the Wizard of Oz the other night. It ran several times on Sunday, I believe it was. You know, and the, the Wizard of Oz is there uh, yelling at Dorothy, I am Oz. You know, and then you get behind the curtain with the Wizard of Oz. He's just some guy yelling into a megaphone. <laughs> and that's really what's going on with radio, okay? You tune in thinking, we know more than you do. We don't know crap. We, we are trying to figure it out just like you are. But our job is to sound like we know what we're doing. We're in touch. We're wired in. And the reality is, you know, they're sitting in the office having a, a pool as to, you know, who's going to die today and who's going to win the presidential election and... Uh, you know, they're talking about whether well, they've got some uh, really good tape of somebody whose uh, brother was shot. And they're just sitting there uh, doing the usual stuff, tuning through uh, ESPN to see what games are on. And suddenly there's an earthquake and everybody is mobilized. In that 20 minutes between the time the earthquake happens and the time they find out the epicenter and the magnitude, this is 20 minutes of knowing absolutely nothing. It is when the ratings of these stations are the highest. The 20 minutes following an earthquake, that is when you dive for the radio. You turn it on. And there's the anchor person, number one, telling you he doesn't know the magnitude or the epicenter. Number two, telling you he's waiting for information. Well, so are we all. And number three, they've got now 19 commercial free minutes to fill because they generally drop all the commercials. So I, I know being a broadcaster, I know what's going on. I know, I, I know what time it is, folks. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. This is why anytime there's an earthquake, you know, you, you gotta sample these radio stations because they are a scream. 
So what happens is, in order to fill the next 19 minutes, invariably, they give out their phone number, and they go to the phones. Because here's what they're going to do. You, the anchor man doesn't know anything. The editor doesn't know anything. The co-anchor doesn't know anything. The sports guy doesn't know anything. The business reporter doesn't know anything. The traffic guy, he didn't feel it. He's up in the air in the helicopter, for Christ's sake. What do they know? So they go to the phones. They're going to go, uh, you know, where the rubber meets the road. They, anybody can call in and tell what they felt and where they were calling from. And these are some of the fun. I mean, really, I, I think we have a pretty funny show. But nothing is ever as funny as the 20 minutes following earthquake when all news radio becomes talk radio. Just for 20 minutes. I mean, I, I'm telling you, if you miss this, you are missing some of the best radio there is. It's inadvertently great radio because it's so awful. It's fantastic. If you like watching train wrecks, you've got to hear, you know, Tom Hewell and Linda Nunez taking phone calls on KNX. That is about as good as radio gets. Or any of the other people. In fact, way better. The daytime people generally are a little more calm and composed under pressure. The best is when they've got the 2 a.m. anger man. <laughs> Now, I don't, I can't speak for the LA stations, but in my radio history, the all news station generally took the 40 year old veteran who's now a drunk <laughs> and who cannot pronounce letters W or F. <laughs> Not mentioning any stations by name. And what they do is they put them on at two in the morning when presumably nobody is listening, and they just kind of cruise to the end of their careers, okay? Now, this is stations all over America. This is not any one station. So you got that guy who, you know, he's jaded. He's just sitting there going, WWJ News Time, 823. WWJ News Time, 825. WWJ Sports Time, 950. And it, this is his life. He's a human automaton. <laughs> now, suddenly, you've got the earthquake. And here's what happens. They go to the phones. Because they don't know what's going on. They go to the phones. And it is a combination of Jeff Spicoli calling in and not knowing he's on the air and cursing. Dude, it was effing awesome. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times I've tuned in and these stations. These are not talk show hosts. These are not talk radio stations. They, they frequently forget to turn the delay on. Dude, <laughs> when that guy calls in. All bets are off. But the average caller is is, is what, what we call in the radio business the P1 listener. This is the the primary listener. This is the person who is the, the primary demographic. The, the caller is the primary demographic. And um, you never really think about it when you listen to all news radio, who the primary audience is, okay? You don't know until there's an earthquake and they start taking these calls on the air. And you start saying to yourself, how old am I? One person older than the next. They're older than dirt. And they're calling in because the worst thing you can do is give old people a chance to call in and report whether there's hail the size of golf balls in their neighborhood or how to get rid of red ants or what's a good cold remedy. I mean, they, they just want to do nothing but be helpful, and they've got plenty of time on their hands. So, of course, this is a mix for disaster. So what they do is they go to the phones, and after Jeff Spicoli hangs up, you get... Your Aunt Sadie, who for whatever reason is not living in Boca Raton, darling, and uh, she is calling in uh, to report on the earthquake. Now, have you heard these calls? I couldn't make these up. I swear they sound like this. And by the way, this is an amalgam of calls. Look up amalgam, okay? This is an amalgam of calls, all right? This is not any one call. But in my mind, this is what it sounds like after an earthquake when you tune into all news radio. Hello, um, I'm in, I'm in La Puente, and I felt, the, I was wondering if you people down there, if you felt it. And it, I felt it, it was kind of a rolling motion, and then it was kind of a jolt, 
and I went to my kitchen, and I can see all the jelly jars rattling, and all my mason jars, and a couple of lids fell off, and a couple of books fell off the bookcase, honey. I, I, I was so scared, and my cat, I could tell that my cat was acting a little strangely. You know, normally she goes right on the litter, but in this particular case, she kind of went on the side of the litter box, and I knew something was wrong. And, and sure enough, we had the earthquake, and I was feeling it. And then I tried to make a call. I tried to call my son-in-law. And my son-in-law, he didn't pick up the phone. I was just getting a fast, busy signal, so I decided to call you. That's, it's one call after another like this. Here's the best thing, okay? The best thing, and I've heard this every time there's an earthquake. Every time there's an earthquake. They come on, they make the following announcement. Uh, could you please, uh, the authorities, all the emergency authorities, ask that you not use your telephone. Except in case of extreme emergency, because, of course, police, firefighters, paramedics need to get, uh, you know, get in touch with the people who need their help. And so, please, whatever you do, do not use the telephone. Okay, let's go to the phones. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> well, if you're not supposed to use the telephone, how is calling KFWB important? Is that an emergency? So you tell people, don't use the phone except in case of emergency. Well, except to call our station. <laughs> I love that. I just love that. Years ago, the uh, rock station here in L.A., KLOS, had just made that announcement. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. KLOS, several years ago, uh, made the announcement to not use the phone except in case of emergency. Then announced they were going to give concert tickets to the 95th caller. I love that. Oh, my God, the Judge Judy show was interrupted. New pictures now into CBS 2 News. There it is. The set of Judge Judy. They're showing actual tape of the Judge Judy show that was taping. It was in progress. I guess it was in Chino Hills. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny. Now, the other things that happen on a day like today in Southern California, everybody is calling. Everybody is calling. Well, it starts with all the people on the East Coast who don't know uh, banning California from Los Angeles. Okay, they, they just see California on the screen and they start dialing. <laughs> You know, it, it'll be your mother. Are you okay, dear? <laughs> well, I, I saw there was an earthquake in San Francisco, and I thought it might affect you. You going to get those calls? You have to get those calls out of the way? Then it's all the other people. Oh, by the way, best day to get laid, boys. Earthquake day. Best day to get laid. Because chicks are going to call you, and they're going to be afraid of aftershocks. They won't allow you entrance to their apartment late tonight. You bet, there's going to be, and they, I'm not making this up, there's going to be several aftershocks in, in the Southland in the next few days. What you want to do is call up any chick you've been trying to nail and ask them if they need somebody to come over. And you're in. <laughs> Just a late reminder. In case this hasn't already happened for you. So I realize we're on in cities that don't have earthquakes. Uh, Dallas doesn't really have earthquakes. Uh, but Portland does occasionally, but it's not as big a deal in Portland as it is here. Seattle, they're not even listening to us live, so this happened like hours and hours and hours ago. <laughs> but uh, for those of you who have had the Southern California earthquake experience, and you want to relay not your experience about, you know, how did you feel it? I felt. No, not that. I'm talking about, you know, the television response. By the way, uh, the anchor man, Micah Ullman on Channel 7. Did you see this guy today? I don't know what market Micah worked in before, but it was pretty clear to me. I'm sure Micah will call me and correct me. I don't think he's ever been on the air during an earthquake. Just, just an opinion. Because, you know, it's a 5.4 earthquake, okay? This is not a 7.1. And he's on the air t saying that he knows there's got to be mass destruction out there and massive injuries and they're all over it and it's massive destruction. And Micah, 
It's a 5.4. Get under the desk with Kent Shocknick, okay, please? Hide out. So anyway, uh, just to give you all the flavor of what this is like. By the way, TV right now is, is going like a pinball machine here in Southern California. I, I'm looking at one report right now. They've got a shot of the shelves of the supermarket. And here's the report. Nothing fell off the shelves. See that? Look at that, Art. Shelves look perfectly good. But because they sent the satellite truck out there, we're going to get a shot of every item in the store. <laughs> look, nothing fell out of the milk uh, the, the milk refrigerator. Nothing fell out of the... All the beer is still there. A couple, couple of plastic bottles fell over. Oh, and there's somebody on a Zamboni at an ice rink uh, during the earth. Somebody got video of the Zamboni going on an ice rink. <laughs> Well, looks like an ice rink. I mean, there is so much nothing going on. You know what the main story is today? Uh, except for Palm Springs, where they say they think that a guy's broken leg might be related to this earthquake 90 miles away. <laughs> except for that. There were no major injuries. There is no major damage. The, the freeways are still open. Nothing collapsed. Nothing buckled. Nothing fell over. Uh, today's top story is that nothing happened. That's today's top story. And there's continuous coverage, live, local, and late-breaking, the latest on what hasn't happened today. We're at a Chevron station, and look, all the gas pumps are still in operation. There's cans of 10W30 motor oil that have not fallen off shelves. Let's get a closer look in HD and all the cans that haven't fallen off the shelf. So uh, give us your perception of what you see in the media, the, what you get uh, on the telephone from your friends and your mother who lives in another state. Let's hear all about it. Tom Likas. Tom All these guys out there listening, you got to pay attention to this stuff. It, it is not just lip service. Your lives will be screwed. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I one 800 tom By the way, love the emails. Here's an email from a listener named Elizabeth. Elizabeth writes in and says, Hi, I am not sure if this is true, but is this the station that talks about a woman that lives and works in Corvell? If you are the station, then you can you please stop talking about her. If you have any questions or comments, then please email me back. <laughs> Dear Elizabeth, are you insane? Okay. <laughs> that was my question. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. It's uh, Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. What's up? Not much. You got, you got the best report on this earthquake thing, man. Nobody else has covered it better than you did. <laughs> so funny, man. Hey, I just, I'm driving home. Uh, I just got home, actually. I you know, counted all the cans on my in my pantry. They're all in there. They're all in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess what the first thing I grabbed when the earthquake hit? My Rolex watch. I grabbed my Rolex one and ran out. That's the only thing I wanted to say. Not the family picture, just that. Dude. <laughs> You're funny. Just want to keep. I up. had a can of Campbell's tomato soup. It fell off a shelf. It's there. It's it made there, a man. dent in my Formica countertop. Uh, everything is in there, man. No problem. <laughs> All right, take me out earthquake style if you have something. What do we have that would be earthquake style? No, that's not earthquake style. That's a, that's a car door opening. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is is it Gray or Gary? 
Yeah, it's gray. It's gray. gray. All right. Well, uh, well, the, our Italian screener is frequently dyslexic. I had to check. Oh, no, not at all. It's gray cool. Gray could be Gary. <laughs> right, yeah. But, yeah, no, man, I totally want to uh, agree with you. I came home from my uh, work, and it's all over the news how nothing is happening. And I think part of that is because the national audience, you know, the, the Midwest, half the people in the Midwest would probably like to see California burning and shaking apart. And because, you know, they think that we're all devils and hedonistic uh, crazies out here. And then the other half would uh, probably like somebody to sympathize with. But I'm thankful, uh, you know, nothing happened. And uh, all the Campbell soup cans are right where they belong. Right. But, of course, the, the coverage is excessive. I'm not just talking about CNN. I'm talking about local TV. Yeah, they had some pictures on there of, uh, you know, wine bottles that had fallen off. And I guess that was pretty interesting to someone. I'm not sure who. <laughs> I've had wine bottles fall off a shelf when we had a sonic boom and the space shuttle was landing. So oh. what? I didn't call Channel 9 and have them send a truck. Hey, maybe you should have. <laughs> the weather guy with the good hair would have been out there. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the guy with the good hair. Hey, you know. <laughs> I wonder if the guy with the journalistic credentials would have come out. Hey, that would be nice. I, I, I don't know which one that is, but hopefully they would have sent him. You know, considering the national media and their their obsession with uh, either stardom or uh, with stardom, and the, like, the stardom takes the place of of actual politics these days, and they're looking for a star more than they're looking for you know real politicians, and they can't. The, the difference between covering Britney Spears and covering the the election is nothing to them. It, it's all the same. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, look at this: a a a, a, a pipe burst at the Macy's. Uh, located in uh, Canoga Park, the Warner Center Macy's. Oh, this is this is big trouble. What happened to the twenty percent off sale? Is that going to be postponed until uh, until they fix the pipe? What's the deal on that? Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. She's got three more years to finish her PhD, so. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that PhD to study for. You take all the time you need working on that. I understand. Then when you've got all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. It's the Tom Likas Show. Asking our Southern California listeners to not use the telephone, except in cases of extreme emergency. Fire, police, and paramedics need to get in touch immediately with people who need help. Please do not use the phone except in case of emergency. Joseph, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah. Joseph. How you doing, sir? I'm yeah, doing great. Fun to call you. No, first time, long time. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I yeah, was just talking to your screener, and uh, just I'm a local cameraman here in Los Angeles. We go up in the helicopter, and we went up right after the earthquake and covered a few of these things that uh, that are going on, relatively minor. So uh, the, the real truth is nothing has happened, right? I mean, this is no big deal. Yeah, no, no big deal. Like you saw in, in uh, a lot of the stores, you know, some of the stuff falling off the shelves. We were out in Pomona where uh, a, a building that was probably 100 years old, the facade fell off of that, so we had a bunch of bricks in the back alley. So, yeah, they, they pump it up a bit. They pump it up. I had my mom call me from Michigan. She's, you know, checking, make sure everything's okay. I was here in uh, 94 during the uh, Northridge quake out in the Chatsworth area, so that was, that was pretty heavy. That was a big story. That was a huge story. That was, that was something to cover. But, um, you know, it is what it is. We, we cover everything, you know, Britney Spears to uh, <laughs> Phil Spector to, to relatively smaller. Equation. All the big stories. Exactly. Yes. I love when the stations talk about being in HD, too, like that somehow adds to the story. Well, you know, it gives it bright and shiny pictures. Yes. <laughs> Widescreen coverage of what? Exactly. It pays the bills, though, so I can't complain. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. But please do not use your telephone except in case of emergency. Cal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, uh, Tom? Yes, Cal. 
Uh, you know, I'm a first time caller, but uh, it's a little off topic. We're supposed to do with the earthquake. This lady in my office, after this, what I thought was a pretty minor earthquake, insisted on calling every human being that she has ever met and telling them that there was an earthquake. Well, I'm sitting five feet away, just wishing for a baseball bat to either hit her. Or <laughs> <myself with. laughs> And, like, the worst part was, you could tell the only reason she was calling was she wanted everybody to know that she got the information before them. And then, because, you know, because she answers phones for a living, so now she's no freaking size mall. Well, you know, when someone calls you and says, did you feel it? The response they're looking for, you know what the response they're looking for is? What are they looking for, Tom? Did I feel what? <laughs> No, if somebody calls me today and asks me if I felt it, I'm going to say, what, you mean the blizzard? Just to see if I can maybe throw a curveball or something. <laughs> I'm going to say, feel this. <laughs> no, you don't understand. Then, I mean, it was just, I don't know, did you think this was a, a bad earthquake? I, I mean, it shook for like 20 seconds. Well, like, it's, considered, you know? it's, it's considered in the earthquake trade a moderate earthquake. Um, you know, certainly 5.4. It's not like an aftershock. It's not like a 3.2 or a 3. I was pretty young for the you know, Northridge earthquake, but I have like a recollection of it being a pretty bad experience. This, you know, I lamented about it for about 10 minutes, made sure I called my house, made sure my house was still standing, and then went back to work. As soon as, soon as I knew that my LCD television hadn't fallen off the, the wall, I was good with it. <laughs> that's, that's good. Those, those were your priorities. Should be that was my concern. Uh, I just want to let you know that that seriously, my office needs to either buy me a door or a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jim on the top like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jim. Hey, the, the station had absolutely, radio station had nothing to talk about right after the quake. So what do they do? They call their own reporters at home. So they called this lady, and all she could talk about was her precious moments figurines she had in the case <laughs> and how they were moving. And not only did this lady waste so much money on these figurines, she buys expensive museum wax to affix them to the case. My husband and I had Walt Disney characters. He gave me Sleeping Beauty on our 20th anniversary, and it fell off the shelf. And it can't be replaced. But, Tom, the best part of it was, oh, my God, the drama. She forgot to wax down one of these figurines. <laughs> and Plato was, like, walking towards the edge of the glass case. And the radio station had so much time to fill, they let it go on and on, right? On and on. <laughs> and also, they also had the old ladies are going... You know, I was here for the 71 earthquake, and I lost water control. <laughs> hey, could you take me out Britney Spears style? You know how that is? How is that? Knock, knock, knock it on heaven's door. <laughs> you just did it yourself, I think. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Betsy on the Tom Like Us show. Hey, Tom. Betsy. Well, I've just been hearing the stories around with this little earthquake that shook everyone out here, woke everyone up here in the morning. I was Woke everyone up? What, what are you, a pot smoker? What are you, a... <laughs> uh, no, don't you have really a job? Not. Well, woke everybody up in my neighborhood. That's right. But, uh, no, I was actually in your Belinda working, um, going door to door, doing my volunteer job. Your volunteer? Is that why you get up at 11.42 a.m.? No, I was up by 9, and we started, like, around 10, and I was just, you know, working, walking around. And um, I was about to ring this doorbell in some house near Belinda. But right away when I was going to, like, put my finger on the doorbell, everything just starts shaking. And you thought it was because you pressed the button? <laughs> no, not What really. did I do? I thought it was just me. I'm like... Am I tripping or what? I'm like, but I'm not on anything. I'm just here doing my work. And it just felt like it was, like, intense, and I just had to hold on to something because I felt like I was going to fall. And By the way, this caller, in 40 years. It was kind of a rolling motion, and I was tripping. I was tripping until I realized it was an earthquake. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.